morning, Pally. Welcome to In Focus on Ice. Today is Tuesday, May 21st, 2024. I'm Tori Kaliba. And I'm Young Cuddy. Tori, what's your favorite thing about the summer and fall coming up? Mm, I'm excited to go to college and uh, meet some new people, get some new experiences. What about you? Oh, man. I'm ready to hear Delta Dawn and Rocky Top play on a Saturday morning. College football, baby. Nice. It's yearbook time. Tomorrow, May 22nd, is Madrono Distribution Day. Seniors, come to the MAC to get your yearbook at brunch. Everyone else, come to the MAC at lunch. Bring a $95 check if you did not pre-purchase your yearbook already. Hey, Vikings, do you know that Pally has its very own podcast? KPLY Pally Radio. It's a student-run podcast feed with both on-campus news and interviews with people that are part of the Palo Alto community. Recently, they interviewed the new strength coach, Anthony Thomas, on his story and how he got into coaching. Visit the link on screen if you want to check it out. Over the past year, In Focus reporter Beck Lines has brought us insightful and unique movie and TV reviews. As we approach the end of the school year, we present one final review. Here's Beck Lines with his April movie TV review roundup. In my opinion, Civil War was a very badly advertised movie. It kept advertising itself as this like high action packed movie where they're storming the Capitol on July 4th and it's this giant civil war when actually it's more of this like slower paced war journalism story. There are some action scenes in the movie that you see scattered around and one big one at the end, but there's rarely a lot of action. The film follows A24's past work by having amazing cinematography, effects, all that. The film is a lot more about the war journalism with more as the American Civil War as a backdrop to tell this story, and it's an amazing movie. You wish you never ever met Challengers is a very unique movie where it only really has three characters and it's built on this whole love triangle dynamic and the conflicts between these people over the course of 12 years. Each character has a very unique perspective on tennis and life in general and that leads to very interesting conflicts between characters who have very opposite viewpoints. The film can be confusing sometimes with all the time jumping between different time periods but it does end up working out in the end. Overall I think it's a great movie. Invincible Season 2 was in a very unique situation, where the first part of it came out when I was doing my first review roundup back in November, and it finally came to an end just within the time period of this review roundup, so I feel like I have to talk about it. This season does have amazing moments, but it feels like the runtime keeps jumping between amazing moments and kind of boring plotline. The show also feels way too tied to a status quo. Like it keeps trying to make these big dramatic changes in the world, but it all just keeps returning to the same baseline. And it makes those changes just feel like they have no weight and you're wondering why they even decided to do that. I feel like a lot of these plot lines have great promise and I hope to see them expanded on in later seasons. Season two was very good and I hope that they can improve over the next planned eight seasons. <laughs> I have been a very big Fallout fan for a while. I was cautiously optimistic about how the show would turn out because the franchise hasn't been in the best state as of late, but it defied my expectations and was an amazing show. The show nails all the aesthetics of Fallout, the whole retro futurism, all the dark humor, all the weird events that happen, it all feels so very Fallout. The characters are also amazing. I feel like our main character, Lucy, is a really good idea where it's this optimistic vault dweller that's put into the dark wasteland. It really echoes the contrast that we see between the 1940s aesthetic and the bombs dropping. The Fallout TV show is great at capturing the vibe that got people to fall in love with the games, and is a great jumping on point for people who are new to this universe. Well, that concludes the final Beck Lions In Focus review. Thank you everyone who watched this year. For In Focus, I'm Beck Lions. Thank you, Beck. That was electric. The window to sign up for the final prime period of the school year closes at noon tomorrow. Don't skip that one. It's the last one. Make sure to sign up to avoid being placed randomly. Let's go, Vikes. Well, that does it for today's show. Follow us on social media at InFocus News to engage with our content and visit our website to view the gosh dang campus bulletin.
Until next time, I'm Tori Kaliba. And I'm Chase Kacher. And for the last time, this has been In Focus News. Have a great day, Vikings. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose.